So let's look into the second example of product uh, structure three uh, for a table manufacturer, right? So in this scenario, we are given uh, some information on assembling a table, right? So the finished table consists of a tabletop and a leg assembly, right? So which means at level zero, we have the complete table as a finished product. And this table has two, two, two children, a tabletop and a leg assembly. And further, the leg assembly uh, is, consists of four legs, two short rails, and two long rails. So the leg assembly has three children, uh, two short rails, two long rails, and four legs, right? And for, uh, on the other hand, uh, the tabletop is made up of uh, 1.5 units of lumber, right? So once you compile this information, uh, I would like you guys to give it a go. You're going to end up this type of product tree structure, right? So I have the independent, which is a table. Uh, it consists of four legs at level one and one top. And further, the leg assembly is consists of two short rails, two long rails, and four legs. So here, I just want to provide a simple example on some of the calculations we did previously. Okay, so let's work with quantities. So I'm taking an example, let's say we need to make 10 tables. So as we know that, we need one leg assembly uh, for one table, right? And the number of tables I need to manufacture are 10. So I need total 10 leg assemblies. Similarly, I will need 10 tops, right? So as there's a need for 10 leg assemblies, I need two short rails for one leg assembly, so which gives me total requirement of two short rails per leg assembly. And we need know that, that we need 10 leg assemblies. So the net requirement is going to be 20 here, right? Similarly, I will need 20 long rails, 40 legs, and from here, I need 15 units of lumber, right? So now, if for an example sake, let's say you already have five leg assemblies as on hand inventories, then how many leg assemblies and short rails, long rails, and legs are required? So in this case, we know that the for the 10 tabletops, we need 10 leg assemblies. However, we have already five on hand. It's going to change my requirements for leg assemblies as five, right? So I use this information in this scenario, right? So the net requirement for leg assemblies is going to be five, right? So now, as we know that the requirement for parent item is changed, is going to have impact on the children. So the children requirements will change too, right? So from here, let's look into the requirements for children at level two. So we need two short rails for one leg assembly. But now, based on new net requirements, we only need five leg assemblies. So I need now 10 short rails, right? I need two long rails for one leg assembly, but the requirement for leg assemblies change, so I need only 10 now, right? I need four legs for one leg assembly, and new requirement is five leg assemblies, so which makes this 20, right? So that brings us back to the what we discussed in the previous uh, video. So always look into net, net requirements. If you're given with the on-hand inventories, so discount those and calculate uh, the requirement, the uh, quantities for the children based on new net requirements. So that's what we did in the leg assembly case. So the idea of this video was to give you one more simpler example because the previous example had a lot more details in terms of on-hand inventories at different levels, right? Uh, but the basic concept remains the same. So please have a look at these two examples on bill of materials. So you should be able to calculate the quantities and adjust the quantities after discounting the on-hand inventories. So have a look at these. If you have any question, please feel free to drop me an email. Thank you.